On March 16, 2020, in Murray County, Georgia, a distressing incident unfolded when the local police were summoned to a horrifying scene. Four fishermen in the vicinity stumbled upon a lifeless body, which was later confirmed to be that of Kenny Bunn. Upon arrival, it was immediately evident to the officers that foul play was at play. Kenny had suffered four gunshot wounds, and the absence of any defensive injuries indicated that this was a ruthless, execution-style murder that had caught Kenny completely off guard. Despite discovering the body and recovering bullets lodged in his torso, establishing a connection to the perpetrator proved to be a formidable challenge. The murderer had taken meticulous precautions to conceal their identity, presenting a daunting obstacle for law enforcement. However, just when it seemed like an insurmountable roadblock, the police stumbled upon crucial CCTV footage of Kenny mere hours before the tragic incident. What appeared to be an ordinary encounter between Kenny and an acquaintance swiftly emerged as the missing piece of the puzzle. This is the heart-wrenching case of Kenny Bunn, who was born on June 14, 1992. In Murray County, Georgia, from a young age, Kenny was recognized for his reserved and introspective nature. While other children embraced social gatherings, Kenny sought solace in solitude, often preferring his own company over spending time with friends. His peculiar demeanor and withdrawn disposition stemmed from the abuse he endured at the hands of his mother's ex-boyfriend. This traumatic experience left emotional and mental scars, giving rise to social anxiety, depression, and a profound sense of self-worthlessness as Kenny grew older. As he transitioned into young adulthood, Kenny's struggle to fit in persisted. He openly embraced a gothic lifestyle, with a deep affinity for dark music and haunting poetry. Despite his unconventional exterior and the curiosity it generated, those who took the time to truly know him discovered his inherent kindness and warmth. Despite projecting an image of being unapproachable, Kenny yearned to belong, but his inability to find his place in the world only exacerbated his depression, leading to thoughts of suicide and further isolation. During most of his time, Kenny secluded himself in his room, engaging in online conversations with his few virtual friends. He also used this time to experiment with drugs. However, by his mid-20s, Kenny was making an effort to turn his thus, his life around, and had become sober. But then came that fateful day in March 2020. On March 16, 2020, around 4.30 p.m., four young fishermen were casting their lines along the banks of Carlton Petty Road. To their shock, they stumbled upon an unresponsive individual sprawled on the embankment of the Kisa River, blood flowing from their nose. As they approached, it became painfully clear that this person was no longer alive. The fishermen immediately contacted the police, who arrived at the scene to find a gruesome sight. The victim, a male estimated to be between 25 and 30 years old, had suffered four gunshot wounds. He had no personal belongings on him, and his identity remained a mystery. It was evident that the killer had meticulously covered their tracks to thwart any attempts by the police to solve the case. Detectives were left grasping for leads as they struggled to discern the motive behind the murder. They were uncertain whether it was a premeditated assassination or a botched robbery. With no solid leads to pursue, detectives canvassed the area, knocking on doors and questioning motorists in the hopes of finding potential witnesses. Despite their efforts, piecing together the events of that tragic night and identifying the victim proved exceedingly challenging. Amid the dead ends and fragmented clues, news of the grim discovery began to circulate throughout town, eventually reaching Kenny's grandmother. She hadn't seen Kenny for nearly two days and upon learning that a body was found near her daughter's home on Carlton Petty Road, she promptly reported him missing to the police. Detectives wasted no time and swiftly arrived at Kenny's grandmother's house. Upon inspection, it became abundantly clear that Kenny was the victim. His grandmother provided detailed descriptions of his clothing, glasses, and a distinctive shoulder tattoo, all of which aligned perfectly with the body found by the river. When she showed them a picture of Kenny, there was no doubt, it was him. L doubts were promptly cast aside as the police successfully identified the victim. Their immediate focus shifted to unraveling the circumstances surrounding Kenny's demise and identifying those responsible. Police initiated their inquiry by interviewing Kenny's family, seeking any insights into his final moments. 
family members confirmed that Kenny had left his grandmother's house around 7.45 p.m. to visit a nearby store. With this information in hand, the police headed to the store and requested access to the CCTV footage corresponding to Kenny's visit. As the footage was reviewed, it revealed Kenny entering the store, clad in the same attire he was found in on the morning of his tragic discovery. A few minutes after his arrival, a blue Honda CRV pulled up, and a young woman approached Kenny in a familiar manner. They engaged in conversation for a while, after which Kenny got into the car with the young woman, and they departed together. This encounter appeared to be the last known interaction with Kenny before his demise. With this potentially crucial lead, the police began efforts to identify the unidentified woman seen in the video. Upon showing the footage to Kenny's family, they promptly recognized her as Kenny's ex-girlfriend, 20-year-old Nadia Schwartz. Kenny and Nadia had crossed paths in 2018, establishing an online relationship that quickly deepened. He was captivated by the enigmatic, darkly attired girl he met on Facebook, someone who seemed to share his brooding perspective on life. Kenny fell deeply in love, believing he had found his soulmate, someone who embraced him for who he was and understood his complex nature. However, after only a few brief months of dating, Nadia terminated their relationship, citing frustration with Kenny's sensitivity and constant need for reassurance. Despite their official breakup, Kenny clung to hopes of reconciliation, and the two remained friends, frequently engaging in conversations that gave Kenny false hope of rekindling their romance. Unbeknownst to Kenny, Nadia had moved on swiftly after their breakup, embarking on a new relationship with 21-year-old Justin Hooker. Despite her newfound romance, she perpetuated communication with Kenny, seemingly enjoying the power dynamic of keeping him emotionally attached. Nadia's involvement presented an intriguing angle for the police. Learning that she resided nearby with her new boyfriend, Justin, they decided to reach out to her. Nadia willingly agreed to speak with the police, and she and Justin came in for questioning. During the interview, Nadia admitted to meeting Kenny on the night he disappeared. She explained that Kenny had asked her for a ride to a friend's house, a request she agreed to fulfill out of their lingering friendship. She mentioned that during the ride, she realized Kenny's true intention was to purchase marijuana, leading to an argument between them. According to Nadia, Kenny exited the car, during the disagreement and walked away, never to be seen again. Certain aspects of Nadia's account raised concerns among the police, prompting them to scrutinize her involvement more closely. Notably, she was the last known person to have seen Kenny alive, and her mention of his intent to purchase drugs troubled the investigators. Kenny had been drug-free since 2019, and was actively working to turn his life around, as confirmed by those closest to him. The notion of his death being related to a drug transaction gone awry was ruled out. Nevertheless, with no tangible physical evidence linking Nadia to the crime scene, the police found themselves with limited options and had to release her, once again, encountering a seemingly insurmountable obstacle. A few days after their interview with Nadia and Justin, the police received an unexpected call from a local attorney in the area. The attorney informed them that he had a client who wanted to share vital information concerning the Kenny Bunn case. This client disclosed that he had sold a small caliber handgun to his cousin Justin Hooker, just a day before Kenny's murder. Initially, there were no suspicions about the transaction, as Justin had expressed a desire for self-protection. However, as news of Kenny's murder spread, the attorney grew increasingly suspicious. Consequently, he reached out to Justin to confront him about the situation. 